again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post here. What's going on, girl? How are you? Great. I uh, just got back from a trip from Kokomo, Indiana. Um, no sprint cars, oh, unfortunately, but we had okay. a good week. Well, when you said <laughs> Kokomo, I was like, Bermuda, Bahama, <laughs> come on, pretty. But that other Kokomo, yes, the yes. one that has really cool sprint cars, they but they did not nothing not this weekend, weekend with the rain. No. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so one place that did have really cool sprint cars was Houston Speedway on Sunday night. Wow, what a debut! What a what a grand reopening that one was. Yes, uh, the Twitter world blew up yes. with all the applause that they gave. Um, and Blake Anderson, I think, said it best. Um, the very first hot lap session, everyone was on their feet, and it was stock cars. So I think they made a pretty good, big and good entrance. Yeah, the story of this one is Husets, uh, I think, was, uh, was, was founded in 1954, and it's been one of those mainstay tracks. And they've had some moments over the history, as all tracks have, but it was one of those rock-solid tracks. Sunday night racing in the upper Midwest was a rock-solid part of racing there. A couple years ago, it went away. And then enter Todd Quaring. Todd is the owner of Jackson Motorplex. We deal with Todd. He has just revolutionized that place. Enter Todd Quaring. He buys Husets, and the rest is history. And what a racy little racetrack. Uh, my buddy Tanner Thorson, the USAC midget racer, said, hey, USAC, can we get a race there? That is a racy little racetrack. So really, really neat stuff. So, hey, we're going to have some fun here today. We're going to do something a little different. Erin Everham, co-host of our Wing Nation show, she's going to join us. We're going to have a little, little round table. And if we had a round table, I bought a gift for you for the you round did. table. did? Well, yes. I love We're surprises. Okay. So I'm at my, my local food I shop at Food Lion. I'm uh-huh. at my local Food Lion. And I'm there, and I walk around the corner, and, and look look what I saw. I didn't know that they carried sage fruit. No, that well, they, they are. They did. And I found them. I couldn't believe that I had sage fruit cherries like two miles from my house. Well, now, okay, now she's going to, okay. So, well, I'm going to let Listen, you, I'm going to let you. These are the best cherries they I've are ever unreal, ate, hands down. They? Unreal. They really are. So, uh, it is. It is cool. So, yes, we, uh, yeah, I, I got that. Those, those Thank are, you. Those, uh, but maybe we'll share them in the round table with Aaron. Well, no, you're not going to share them. I can tell already. Why? Never mind. That was a that was a nice idea, but it's not going to be reciprocated. I get that. So, hey, I'll tell you what. There was some great racing this past week at Knoxville Raceway in Knoxville, Iowa. Geo Selzy and Kyle Larson. It was the Ollie's Bargain Outlet All-Star Circuit of Champions. Blake Anderson and Tony Bachoven with a call. It's our Dry Dean Diesel All-Deftifying Move of the Week. And now for the Dry Dean Deftifying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. Kyle Larson looking to become the first driver in all-star history to win seven straight main events. Oh, we got one nearly around in front of your leader, but off a turn number four. Oh, they're banging wheels, but Larson went seven straight. That deaf-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf, the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Team Dryden. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. So glad you have joined us. Going to do something a little bit different. Now, we have Wing Nation here. You catch us all the time uh, where, where you're watching us here from. But we also have our Tuesday and Thursday shows and podcasts. Uh, Ashley's my co-host here, and uh, Aaron Everham co-hosts the show with us on Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, we're going to the Hercules Tire Hotline where Aaron joins us. Hello, Aaron. Welcome into Wing Nation. Is that weird or what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. I kind of like this, though. And, you know, it's got the band all back together. So how are you, Aaron? How are things in your world? I'm good. Very good. You know, life, life is good, even though I haven't made it to too many races this year. I've certainly watched plenty online. Yeah, you know what? We got a couple of things we want to talk about, but let's talk a little bit about the advent of online racing because it has drastically altered our lives as far as the way we could follow this. And Aaron, you're, you're probably the per- well, any of us in North Carolina are a good example because this is certainly not the hotbed of sprint car racing. But but Aaron, we get a chance here in South or in, in North Carolina in the South to follow along with a lot of races with the advent of pay per view. 
We really do, and I think we've always appreciated what Dirt Vision and Speed Shift and Flow Racing and all the providers have given us uh, in the past years. But this year, with more coverage from you know more streaming networks, and the fact that you really, I mean, at least for me, I have not really been to a racetrack, which is sad, but I haven't. I haven't had a, a real reason to go, and we've tried to be pretty good about the social distancing thing. So this year, I have really relied on it. I mean, I. We're we're almost online every night that there is a race. So I you know I make Kate watch it, Ray and I are watching it, and it's kind of funny. Like sometimes I'm the Ray laughs at me like I'm the dude in the house all the time, and I'm like, hey, we got it. The sprint car races are starting. He's like, you know, how, how did I marry a woman who always wants to watch racing? Obviously he appreciates it, but it's funny that I'm the one who's like, we got to put it on it's time. Hot lap, you know, hot laps are going on right now. Well, we know. So I, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I know that we always see you with your computer up and, and the sprint car races on and your glass of wine. So I'm just curious what the wine bottle count is up to this oh year, because I'm sure it's a little bit more than it has been in years past. I mean, I, I am a trained professional um, and there hasn't been there's the quarantine with a five year now five year old. And you've seen her. She's joined the show a few times this year when we were doing them through Zoom. Uh, so life has been a little chaotic. I, I'd rather not count how many bottles of wine we've consumed, but um, it's it's pretty good. I mean, we, we've done a good job. And, and what we're watching, Aaron, on the pay-per-view has been an absolute amazing performance by Kyle Larson. And it is, it, it's, it's just, you're, you're a former racer and, and, and Aaron's story is she's a, a world of outlaw winner qualified for Knoxville, very accomplished racer. But when you watch something like we're seeing with Kyle Larson, what crosses your mind? Um, excellence or history. Like, I really feel like we're watching history. You know, growing up, I was, well, I still am the biggest Steve Kinzer fan and Carl Kinzer and Mark Kinzer. Like, I just loved watching them when I was younger. They're dominant, what they could do. And I feel like I'm kind of getting to see that in a different way again with Kyle Larson. And I know the stock car racer, too, and he's, you know, hit and miss this year as far as what races he's going to. But when he and Paul Silva show up at the racetrack, it, you're watching, it's history. It's, he's a legend. I mean, he'll forever go down in the record books as one of the greatest sprint car drivers of all time. Yet he's not even 30 years old, or maybe he just turned 30. I don't even know. I think 29. But we're watching something that is just incredible. And, and when you say that what we're watching online this year, it's not just for me, watching Kyle Larson dominate, because that's incredible, and I am a, a huge fan of watching his talent. But it's been the racing this year. Like, even if Kyle's winning, the racing for second is just fantastic. Or if Kyle's not there, and it's a race from Knoxville with Rico, or if it's a race from Pennsylvania with Danny Dietrich and Freddie Raymer and their drama, like, there has been such good competition to watch that it almost makes it seem okay to be watching online versus being in the track. Like, I'm getting the adrenaline rush sitting on my couch watching the races. Couldn't agree more, especially after Lernerville with Sweet Shots and mm -hmm. Larson oh and whoever God. was. I mean, oh. that was absolutely incredible. And all, we've talked about it all year long, how good these races have been, even though we can't actually be there. But this weekend at Houston, obviously oh. with the, the grand opening of that place coming back, it was nice to see that Kyle is still human. You know, there is yeah. still margin for error. I'm glad he walked away from that. But just your opinion on Houston's opening and, and what you really saw this weekend. I was so thrilled to see that Todd Queering was buying Houston and it was going to open back up. You know, all the racetracks I've, I've driven across the country, Houston is one of my favorite. I just think that the, the banking, the width, the cushion, the like, it just provides some awesome racing. And those fans in, in South Dakota, they're legit. Sioux Falls loves them sprint car racing and they show up as you could see if you saw anything from from the other night i mean it was packed even with the virus and all so i mean i was just thrilled to see the track open yeah it was kind of sad to see uh you know kyle have a flip you never want to see anyone wreck like that but it did make us realize that he he, he was human he made a mistake uh but i, I love you anyway somebody you know asked my opinion of it on on twitter and i wrote back uh, you know it, it's one of the most bad arse tracks that I've ever been to and a quick story if we got time first time I went there with Ray I went out to qualify and you sit in the infield when you qualify there and you know it's qualified wide open like there's their track was heavy and I pulled in and, and Ray looked at me this is when we like he was kind of obviously he's known sprint car racing forever but one of the first times the track with me and he was like he looked at me like I had three heads when I got out of the car and I'm like what like did I mess up is he going to critique me he's like did you just 
did you just qualify wide open? And I was like, yeah, you, you, you have to. And he looked at me, he was like, I, I couldn't do it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yes, you could. Like, you, you could do it. He was like, he was just blown away by the speed. And, and like, that's, I don't know, I always remember that story because I thought, like, to me it was no big deal. But for him, he was just in awe of the place. And it, that's kind of how I've always felt about he was just such a cool track. When you blow away a NASCAR Hall of Famer like that, that's pretty impressive, that is for sure. Hey, stay with us. We've got more with Aaron Evernham in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. Welcome back in this Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Joining us on the Hercules Tire Hotline is our very own Aaron Evernham. We've been talking a lot about what we have seen. Uh, Aaron, coming up is what we will see, but what we won't see live. It's kind of weird. It's kind of icky. It's a little sad, but it's exciting also. Uh, Knoxville is coming up, and it's not the Knoxville Nationals. The 60th annual Knoxville Nationals will take place next year. But there's other races going on. This weekend, the 360, we've got Oskaloosa, the Oski Challenges, and then next week, the one and only, which is the replacement of the Knoxville Nationals. Um, Am I the only one that's weird about this, Aaron, or does this just seem like a strange time when we're normally packing our bags and we're now we're we're looking forward to it, but are we or are we not? Oh, I think saying a weird time is putting it, yeah. putting it nicely. I mean, I feel like it's depressing. You know, I've... I can't. I think I've been to Knoxville like 16 of the last 20 years. I have missed just a few in the last 20 years of my life. So um, depressing, sad are some of the words I would use. But there is part of me that is thankful that this the, the 60th running has been postponed a year because I don't want to miss that. So we'll be there for that. So that gives me a little bit of a, a sense of relief that I'm not totally missing out. But um, from all the people in the industry and people, uh, some of the friends I've talked to, you know, they're kind of still excited about the one and only, like it is still kind of their Knoxville Nationals, which only makes me more depressed that I'm not going to yeah, be there because yeah. it sounds like I'm sure there's going to be a good time and a few beverages had. Um, but again, I guess it goes back to being thankful for watching online because I'll certainly be tuned in the whole time. I mean, it's, Knoxville is just such a special place. It really is. And you can tell by some of the drivers that we've talked to, yeah, it's not the 60th, but they're still excited to go back to Knoxville and run for a decent purse. And even this year, they've changed the format up on everything that they're doing. So I still think it's going to be a great event. Like you said, depressed that we're not there hanging out with our friends at the Iowa Beer Bus. (laughs) Now I'm depressed. (laughs) But Aaron, what are your thoughts on the, the unique format and kind of yeah, they know it's not the Nationals, so and they're not trying to replace it, but they're trying to do something unique and still keep the event and the liveliness still there. I think it's great. I mean, there's still a really solid purse. I like what I read as far as the format. I love that the heat races are you still full invert, so you got to come from the back to you know earn those points through a heat race. I think you know all the Knoxville Nationals I've been to, whether I've been in it or watching, the heat races are almost the best part of the night as it is, because you know the fastest qualifier. I think. I think now starts with eighth or 10th. It used to be full invert. Um, so I, I love that they're trying to make it something special considering the circumstances this year. Um, and like you said, I think the drivers still have that sense of um, it's not the Knoxville Nationals, but it's the one and only. And it's going to still have bragging rights. You're still at Knoxville with the best of the best. So it doesn't really matter if it has that same title. It's still a huge event to win for bragging rights. Yes, it is. $50,000, too, doesn't look bad in the bank account. Not that I would know, yeah. <laughs> but I've heard that's really, really good. I know the race teams would like it. That is for sure. Yes, I'm in radio. Remember, we don't even see that. Okay. Um, hey, before we get to that, and that's all next weekend at Knoxville, uh, tonight, as you're watching this on Saturday, if, 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 if that's the day you're choosing to watch this, it is the 360 Nationals. But Sunday, the 360 race, the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour race at Oskaloosa, and then the Front Row Challenge on Monday night. Aaron, what Terry McCarl does over at Oskaloosa is all part of the fun out there as well. It sure is. I mean, that that, that was always considered the uh, party where a race broke out because it was <laughs> such a good time. And I love Oskaloosa. One of my, my second ever 410 race, we went to Oskaloosa for the Front Row Challenge. 
And I actually finished sixth that night, my second 410 race ever. And I passed Casey Kane and I passed Sammy Swindell. And uh, for that reason alone, <laughs> it's one of my favorite tracks and one of my better memories in, in racing, period. But it's a great track. Terry does such a neat job, and, and Lori, neat job of promoting the event and giving away fun, you know, all sorts of sponsor products for heat races and you name it. There's raffles, there's there's everything. They just do a really good job of making it a unique event, and it's such a great way to, you know, make that whole week that you're in Knoxville something special. You've got, you know, you kind of get off, you have, you have to leave the dingus and you actually go over to Oskaloosa for a night, and then, you know, it's just, a, it's become a special part of Sprint Week out there. And the good news is, is this year, Terry has opted to go the pay-per-view yes. route, um, <laughs> unlike years yeah. past, because he wants you to leave Dingus and actually come to the racetrack. So <laughs> you can catch it on Racing Boys. Um, Aaron, obviously, we've talked about the wine earlier, and it's still kind of important. But I mean, <laughs> do you guys have a spread when you sit down for these big races? Is it a party amongst yourselves? Uh, no, not usually, because I think, you know, with, with a young one at home, we usually eat dinner pretty early. So there's definitely the wine involved, uh, you know, but usually it's wine, dogs are there, you know, it's, it's actually become like a fun, um, family time, which is funny because you're not at the track, but it's cool to watch Kate get really into it. Like she knows a lot of the cars and the drivers now, you know, sometimes she's off playing with her toys and stuff, but she still comes in and engages. So. And, you know, some nights, if it's certainly if it's a West Coast night, we'll be watching in bed. And, you know, like even the night at Lernerville, we were, <laughs> we were lying in bed watching the race and Ray fell asleep. But I got so excited at the finish. I was like, woke him up. And it, it Ray does not get woken up well. He's not one of those people like, oh, great. Thanks for waking me up. I think I got a few curse words, but the race was that good. So it's not usually uh, I, sh- I shouldn't say that in Knoxville, we might do something special and have, you know, maybe some friends over to watch because. Um, it's a little bit different, but on a, a usual night, it's, it's pretty low key here at the Everham household. Nothing wrong with that. It's all good. <laughs> that is for sure. Between, uh, between dirt vision and flow racing and racing boys and all the other ones, I'm telling you what, we are, uh, we are living right. That is for sure. Well, Aaron, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad that we got a chance yeah. to share a little bit about our, our visits that we have got a chance to share it here on the program today. And, uh, we appreciate you joining us and, uh, we'll, uh, well, we'll talk to you this week on wingnation.com. Uh, you can catch that Tuesday and Thursday with us. But uh, but thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Maybe we can have Ashley as one of our guests on Tuesday. There we go. We'll have to work on that. Exactly. <laughs> Aaron Everham joining us. Stay with us. Our Tweet Your Seat Tweets of the Week are coming up next. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back, you're watching Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit, and it is your time of the week. That's right, it's time to tweet your seats, and we're kicking it off with the Ollie's Bargain Outlet All-Star Circuit of Champions. It was four nights of racing. We're going to start with Thursday at the Plymouth Dirt Track. This tweet comes from Matthew and Lance. Um, it was the ASCOC and the IRA Sprints. It was the Race Rudeen Foundation. Really cool deal. $26,000 to win. Obviously, Kyle Larson was your winner. And uh, he was followed by Kerry Madsen and Gio Selzy. Yes, some good stuff there. Then they rolled to 34 Raceway over in Iowa for Friday night's racing action. This tweet from Derek. And, well, it was the same. <laughs> Kyle Larson picked up the win. Corey Eliason and Tucker Klassmeyer followed him across the line. Then we go to Knoxville Raceway. These tweets come from Nick, Derek, and Corby. Again, Kyle Larson <laughs> picks up another win. His seventh, here, yeah. right? His seventh consecutive All-Star win. A new record also. Um, again, it was the All-Star Circuit of Champions, and he was followed by Rico Abreu and Gio Selby. What I like about this win streak is when you look at the racetracks. Sharon Speedway in uh, Ohio, mm-hmm. uh, Williams Grove in Pennsylvania, twice at Port Royal, then the little track at Plymouth, 34 Raceway, Knoxville. It didn't matter size, shape, series, sanctioning body, whatever it is, he was winning them. But 
all good things must come to an end. And at Houston's, well, it came to a crashing end yes, for him at Houston's. Uh, these tweets, though, and, and, and fortunately he was all right with his crash there. Uh, these tweets from Casey, from Shane, from Daniel, and from Jason. It was the reopening. Uh, Todd Quaring uh, purchasing the racetrack. It was Corey Eliason getting the victory. Eliason over Dominic Selzy. This was a thriller. And Kerry Madsen with another podium finish. So it looks like the Madman's got things rolling along pretty yeah, good, too. Absolutely. absolutely. And speaking of someone else who's got oh things rolling, gosh. we're going to start at Williams Grove. Well, then we finished the Kyle Larson portion <laughs> yes. of the program. Now, Ashley, why don't you tell us about the Danny Dietrich we're portion gonna, of the We're going to go to the Double D section, uh, Williams Grove. <laughs> the Double D section? Huh? What? Huh? what? <laughs> the tweets come from Linda, KSL, and Charles. Uh, Danny, 25th career Williams Grove win is first of the season. Um, he was followed by Brent Marks and Anthony Macri. I want to know how many second place finishes Brent Marks has. First off, oh, it was God Kyle bless. Larson. It was Kyle He's Larson. Been a true bridesmaid yes, he has all been. Year. Yes, exactly. But uh, it's cool. Then it was off to the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. This tweet from Jeff. Well, Danny Dietrich took it off from Billy. Okay, his brother. How about that? You imagine Wanda sitting in the stands watching that mess? <laughs> it was Danny, Billy Dietrich, and then Jim Siegel finished in the third spot. Then it was over to Trailway Speedway, a place they don't get too often. Uh, they uh, call it the farm track because yep. there's corn literally right around the track. Um, tweets come from DMC Bud, Wanda, Jeff, Burt, WKOT, and CJ. It was the annual Armin Hostetter Memorial uh, annual visit for the 410s. Obviously, they run a lot of other things there. Um, it's usually 358s on Friday nights. Um, and Danny, he yes. did it again for the 3 He swept the entire weekend, and he was followed by Todd Gracie and Chase Deeds. Then we went west of Pennsylvania, western part of Pennsylvania from Laura. It is uh, A.J. Fleck. Complete chaos. His first win at Lernerville. Uh, love this picture though. He's got a six foot sub. You imagine <laughs> taking that back to the boys in the pit area? That I know crew, they're happy. That crew ate well after that. It was A.J. Carl Bowser and Jack Sodeman Jr. And speaking of eating, look at this birthday party. Ashley, how about this? Uh, Kevin, you get the Dad of the Year Award for more reasons than one. You not only consume the children's time for probably a solid 30 minutes that they're not running around crazy, you also did some sprint car Yes, wings. and the craft was make your own wing. How about that? And I see our friends at Hercules Tires are sending a little gift as well. Oh, cool. So neat stuff. So fun, fun stuff. Absolutely. Remember to get those tweets. Keep those tweets coming in. Ford's racing routes extend all the way back to 1901 when Henry Ford won his first and only race and in the last October when Donnie Schatz brought the Ford power to the World of Outlaw Victory Lane at Lakeside Speedway and another trophy was added to the case. For anyone who loves sprint car racing, that was a banner day. It became clear the Blue Oval was back on the dirt tracks and in a big way with a new FPS 410 engine built in America for a truly American form of racing. Ford is more committed than ever to providing grassroots racing with the contemporary power it craves. Yes, and craving more Wing Nation? Stay with us. We'll be back with that in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. There are people who say things aren't made here anymore. Those people should make a trip to Michigan or Kentucky or Illinois, where you'll find our workers and dealers and engineers and technicians building for America. We're proud to employ more hourly workers than any other automaker in this country because we build for this country. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. So glad you're spending your time with us here in Knoxville. Uh, the 360 Nationals. I, hey, your buddy Linton Jeffrey got the 360 win last week he there, did. so he's setting himself up for the big race. Yes, yes, getting prepared, but I know he was like, super excited for that. Yeah, really, really neat. couple of nights of the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, that's Saturday night and then Sunday night at Oskaloosa, and then the Front Row Challenge at Oskaloosa, and then... The one and only. So good, good times. And uh, the month of August, a weird month of August, but well, it's a weird 2020. So I That's think an it fits. I think it fits right into that. That's for sure. <laughs> There's so, no doubt about that. Absolutely. Where's your modified? Where are you guys racing next? Do you um, have plans or not? Yeah, we're looking at Pennsylvania. Woo! Yeah, look out. 
Maybe some Speed Palace, maybe some Lincoln. We'll see. Oh, man, oh, <laughs> man. The lethal chassis is headed up north. That is for sure. Hey, we appreciate Aaron Evernam for joining us here on the program. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Yeah.